Good morning, good afternoon, hello, and thank you for joining us. My name is Tori Carmen. I'm a representative with Humana, and today we're gonna to be talking on a very important topic. It's basically five habits to help prevent Alzheimer's disease. And so the focus of today is really just to empower you, the viewer, with some information to learn about what Alzheimer's disease is, right? And then learn some lifestyle habits that maybe you can take on into your daily routines to help prevent the onset of a very dangerous disease that we call Alzheimer's, all right? Now, before we get started, I just wanna first, once again, introduce myself. My name is Tori Carmen. I'm a sales representative with Humana. And the thing about this whole presentation, it was devised by our clinical staff over at Humana. So basically the information that you hear today is not to replace anything that you've heard from your, your uh, care team or your health provider, but really just something that you could bring into discussion if you have any questions that you wanna talk to your health providers about. So definitely before you change any diet or any kind of exercise regimens, definitely bring your healthcare provider into that discussion before making on any changes. Now that we've got that disclaimer out of the way, I wanna go ahead and go through this presentation and just make sure that we answer a lot of questions along the way and then give you some healthy takeaways. So with all that being said, one thing that's really important is to figure out what Alzheimer's disease is. So the first part of this uh, discussion is gonna talk about what is Alzheimer's disease, right? Uh, what are some early stage signings that we can like figure out if we possibly are on that spectrum? And then we're gonna talk about some of those lifestyle habits that we can use long-term to prevent the onset of Alzheimer's. Now, Alzheimer's disease, if you may or may not know, is the most common type of dementia, and it has progressions. It can seriously affect a person's life, and basically when we learn about it, it there are like five lifestyle habits that can help prevent it. Now, to get into the basics of Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's disease is an irreversible brain disorder it, it slowly destroys a person's thinking and memory skills, and it has the most common cause of dementia among other older people. Almost, as, almost Alzheimer's disease is progressive, which means that over time it does get worse, right? So the main thing is if we start seeing some of those early signs that we really kind of get ahead of it early on and start talking to our healthcare providers. Now, Alzheimer's has no cure, unfortunately, as of today, but there are treatment options to help with the symptoms. Now, those treatments don't really stop Alzheimer's from progressing, but they can temporarily slow the worsening of, that, of the dementia symptoms that it causes. Now, to the next slide, we wanna talk about how Alzheimer's affects the brain. Now, to really get into the science of it, your brain has over 100 billion nerve cells, and also called, we call these like neurons. Now, each brain cell connects with many others to form what we call communication networks throughout the brain. Now, these groups of brain cells have special jobs. Some are responsible for thinking, some are responsible for learning new information, some are good for memorization, and then others help us to uh, make sense of the world around us with our seeing, our hearing, things like that, right? Now, to carry out their job, brain cells operate really like little tiny factories. Now, that's one way to really think about it because they receive supplies, like they, uh, they make energy, right? And then they create equipment and get rid of waste. That's literally a lot of the functionings that are happening inside of the brain. Now, all the while they're processing and storing information and communicating with other cells. Now, in a brain that has Alzheimer's disease, parts of your brain cells factories probably aren't running as well as they should. And just like if we were thinking about a real factory, right? Um, if you see like a backup or a breakdown in one area of the factory, it'll start causing problems and delays in other areas. And that's exactly what happens in a brain that's now having onset of Alzheimer's. You may have a breakdown or a slowdown in one area of the brain and it can start affecting other parts of the brain. That's really just a general like, way of really conceptualizing what Alzheimer's is and how it works um, if we start, uh, start seeing those types of symptoms of dementia. Now, the unfortunate part about that is as the damage spreads throughout the brain, we can start losing our ability and, uh, for your brain to start doing certain jobs. And then that eventually sees like those neurons die off and that causes permanent changes in the brain. So before we get to that part, that's why it's really important that we pay attention to any early warning signs. Now, onto the next slide, we wanna really start talking about 
um, one of those abnormal structures in the brain, because those are like really the prime suspects in damaging and killing brain cells. Basically, those two real common types are plaques, and then there's tangles. Now, plaques are what we call deposits of protein fragments that, um, you know, the scientific word is called beta amyloids, um, but they really build up in spaces between brain cells. And that's what plaque looks like when it's inside the brain. And then you got something called tangles, and that's when you have like twisted fibers um, of other proteins called tau, they build up inside of the cells. Now, th what the sciences are telling us is basically uh, they're not sure what role plaques and tangles play in Alzheimer's disease, but most experts believe that those blockages, um, they, they cause like breakdowns in communication between the brain cells, and that's what causes those disruptions and processes when your cells just really need to survive. So it's really important to remember that it's the destruction and the death of brain cells that causes the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. That's all we really want to get across through that whole scientific overlay of how Alzheimer's works, right? Now, now that we've really kind of talked about what Alzheimer's disease, how it looks inside of the brain and like what causes it, what we really wanna focus on on this next slide is five strategies to help you keep your brain healthy, okay? So researchers recently identified that there are really five strategies, five, that can help us really in the process of significantly lowering the risk of Alzheimer's disease. In fact, researchers have found that when you study participants um, and they have adopted at least four of the five strategies that we're gonna talk about, that they basically reduce their risk of onset of Alzheimer's by 60%. So that's a really big leg up if we can just like think about it, right? And so um, with that being said, the first lifestyle change, believe it or not, is exercise. <laughs> exercise has been found as one of the most healthiest ways to improve your brain functioning, right? So staying active has many health benefits, including, of course, helping to reduce uh, falls, right? And that's another key element that we'll talk about. Helps you to maintain your independence long term. It also reduces the risk of other chronic diseases like depression, diabetes, high blood pressure. So just staying healthy or, uh, or active has a lot of other built-in benefits. Um, and then, of course, it also decreases the risk of age-related cognitive disease, what we consider dementia and Alzheimer's. So really, the whole goal when we start talking about exercise is really just to think about getting our mind around doing at least 150 minutes per week of some type of physical activity that you enjoy. And really, when you break that down, it really looks like, what, 30 minutes you know, per day for at least five days a week. And when we talk about activities you enjoy, they can be really just any type of exercise program that uh, includes things that you like doing, whether it's walking with your, with your neighbors or friends, you know, around the block or at your local park, or if it's like, you know, getting in a group fitness class or aquatic aerobics is also very cool. <laughs> uh, even if you like things like line dancing, right? If you, if you really enjoy, you can really get a good sweat and you can get at least 30 minutes of it in per day, you can really, really help yourself long-term in all of the other areas in which it helps in your physical health, but it can help in your cognitive health as well, right? Um, so with that, we also want to talk about the next uh, lifestyle change, which is basically minding your eating habits. And so really when that mean, what that means is basically we're talking about following a specific diet really called the mind diet. And that really may significantly lower your risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. Now, the MIND diet really stands for Mediterranean and DASH intervention and neural uh, degenerative delay. That's what that MIND stands for. So it's really grafted from the Mediterranean diet. And the diet consists of focusing on 10 brain-healthy food groups um, while limiting uh, five other food groups. So the basic 10 food groups that the MIND diet really focuses on is first, your green leafy vegetables, right? That's basically number one. So you really wanna think about in that area, think about your spinach, your kale, your salad greens, um, you know, things like that. And you really wanna aim for at least two servings per week at a very minimum so that, um, or if you can get up to six more, or more servings per week, that even helps, you know, a lot, a lot more. But that's really a big key in terms of getting your green leafy vegetables. The second is you want to get all your other vegetables, and that's where we talk about things like sweet potatoes, your tomatoes, your peppers, your carrots, your cauliflower, green beans, right? You want to get at least one serving of those per day, 
right? That's very important. The other one is nuts, right? And uh, I hear walnuts are really good for brain health, but you know, you really want to get at least five servings of nuts per week uh, when we're talking about the MIND diet. The other one is berries when we have those in season. Uh, really, when you talk about berries, they're, they're really the only uh, fruit that's actually featured in the MIND diet. And you want to at least get two servings of those per week. An easy way to get berries into your diet if, is if you think about maybe if you have like, uh, you go to your frozen food section, they have frozen bags of berries. You just drop that in a smoothie in the morning and you got your, your servings of berries, right? Um, some other op uh, items on the, on the MIND diet are the beans and legumes, right? So you want to really think about getting your beans, your lentils, uh, and at least think about getting at least four, uh, four of those servings per week. Uh, we talked about whole grains. That's another one of those categories in the MIND diet. And you really want to think about getting uh, three or more servings per day. A really great way of doing that is if you think about maybe having oatmeal. Uh, that's a really good way. You got your quinoa, you got things like your, your barley, just your whole grains. And, and then of course you got your whole grain sprouted bread. It's an easy way of getting whole grains into your diet. And another thing I'll be talking about is maybe some recipes later on at the end of this uh, presentation to really figure out ways to start incorporating the MIND diet. Um, also, it talks about using fish, uh, which are in the, in the types of fish that it focuses on are salmon, uh, your, your tuna, your mackerel, and even like what they call farm-raised trout. Uh, and you really want to get to at least uh, one serving per week of fish. And that's really good in uh, terms of incorporating the MIND diet. They also talk about poultry, uh, like your chicken or your turkey. And you can get at least uh, like two servings per week uh, with regards to that. You also have olive oil. That's a really key feature in that MIND diet. Um, essentially what it does is it, it's, it's really a good way of getting your healthy fats into your diet. Right, and it gives you a good dosage of your healthy cholesterol, so like, uh, that improves your HDL. But we'll talk about that in another conversation. And believe it or not, the last item in the Mind Diet is a serving of wine, red wine. Right? It talks about if you uh, want to drink one glass of red wine per day, that's actually good for your cognitive health. Right? So really, when you think about it, in all those ten food categories, is a great way to start creating a foundation. Uh, in terms of having a healthier diet. And it has a lot of other health benefits just, not just for your, your, your brain health. Um, but really with the MIND diet, there are really five categories of foods that we really want to stay away from. So on this next slide, the five categories of unhealthy foods that the MIND diet specifies that we stay away from. First one up, red meat. Unfortunately, red meat has um, been proven to not be very good for our cognitive health. And so if you can try to minimize your serving to like three or less per week, that's really giving yourself a leg up. Another one is butter and, butter and, and like margarines. Uh, you wanna have at least um, like less than one tablespoon of those servings per day. You also see cheese uh, as a category that you wanna stay away from. So you can limit your cheese to less than one serving per week, uh, that helps. Uh, they also talk about pastries and sweets. This is probably like where a lot of people get caught up uh, because it's easy to you know, grab a snack that actually ends up being a pastry or a sweet. And, uh, and unfortunately, the goal is to eat less than four servings per week of those types of uh, products. And the very last one, which um, I know affects a lot of us, is fried foods or at least fast foods, uh, which typically are deep fried, right? You want to limit your consumption of fried and fast foods to less than one serving per week, guys. Uh, and, and one of the things that you'll see in all five of these categories of unhealthy foods to stay away from is that they all are really key risk factors in increasing our cholesterol, right? Our LDL or our, our bad cholesterol. So the focus here is to, re, you know, reduce our intake of products that can, re, you know, increase our cholesterol which basically would slow down the oxygenation of the blood, which slows, slows the blood flow to the brain. So it's like one domino affects the other. So the whole goal is to reduce those five categories and increase the 10 that we talked about before in the MIND diet, all right? On the next slide, in terms of really uh, incorporating those lifestyle changes, the next uh, item is giving your brain a workout. 
So this is a key piece where we talk about challenging your mind, and it really talks about having short and long-term benefits for your brain and helping to reduce your risk for dementia and cognitive decline. And so some of the ideas for um, mind fitness is really to think about doing things like brain uh, puzzles or crossword puzzles, or if you're into Sudoku or jigsaw puzzles, or like those brain teaser games. Doing those on a daily basis or on a weekly basis actually just kind of gives your, 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 your mind an activity or a new challenge, right? Uh, a couple of other things that you want to talk about is learning new information. So if it was ever on the bucket list to think about, man, I want to learn a new language, or I want to learn some new uh, computer application, or any kind of new task, a new way of, uh, like a new dance style, just putting yourself in an environment or in a classroom setting where you're learning new information that's interesting to you actually gives you the benefit of um, challenging your brain to stay fit. So it's like you have exercise for your physical body, but these are ways that you can like have exercise for your mental health, right? Um, it also talks about taking on new projects that involves designing and planning. So if you ever wanted to maybe um, plant a herb garden or if you wanted to like, um, I'm not sure, like if you wanted to design like a shelf system or something different in the house, those are different things that require you to be creative and it, focus, it forces the brain to uh, think about new things in a new way. And all of these tips really are about creating activities that uh, vary from person to person, but gives you challenges. Um, and then of course, socializing and connecting with others really helps to uh, support brain health and possibly delay those onsets of dementia. Now, uh, some other ways uh, that can also help is if you think about uh, being more social is like volunteering. So if you uh, wanted to volunteer with a local community organization, or like if you talk about like going to your local food pantry and just helping you know organize uh, supplies kits and things of that nature, or if it was um, if you got a love for animals, just being out in your community and maybe working with the local animal shelter, things like that. That basically puts you in environments where you're able to communicate and converse with new people in your community. And I know we we're in a challenging time right now, but if you can do it in a safe way, it's something to keep in mind. Um, or, uh, you know, another one was basically if you ever wanted to, like, you know, tutor little kids or teach a Sunday school class, that's another way of getting out and doing some volunteer work. Uh, joining a special interest club, like a book club, or if you play cards or dominoes with your friends, that's another way of just staying active, health, like in a brain, in a, in a, in a mind healthy way, right? Um, taking group classes, like group fitness classes, is also great. Um, making regular weekly dates with friends. So if you have a walking group and you all meet weekly or meet at the park on a, on a daily basis, that's a great way of having social engagement, which is really good for your brain health, right? Um, and then of course, keeping up with family members and friends by regularly calling and emailing. Now I know, once again, like I said, we're in a situation where it's probably not, um, easy as much as easy to get out but there are ways of connecting because i know we've all had to like develop new skills with uh socializing using technology and that's another way of actually keeping your brain sharp is learning these new technological ways of staying connected right in a time like we're in now and so when you think about all of these things these are all really good ways to give your uh, mind more brain activity and that's really increasing blood flow to the brain which basically keeps those neurons and those neuro uh, neurological networks connecting and firing off. So that's really a good help. On this next slide, um, it talks about one of the major dangers, which is basically quitting smoking. So if smoking is a daily lifestyle, that's something we really want to eliminate or at least um, lower <laughs> at the very least. Because research shows that smokers are 30% more likely to develop dementia. However, quitting smoking really can decrease the risk of dementia to, uh, to that of a non-smoker. So quitting smoking, I know, can be hard, um, but it's not impossible. Uh, you really want to start there by talking to a healthcare provider to create a plan for quitting smoking. Uh, and that can include ways to deal with cravings and symptoms, um, you know, that just kind of make you like want to snap back and grab a cigarette. So we want to try and focus on things that can um, help us reduce those cravings. So talking to your healthcare provider can give you some strategies in that area. You also wanna include like uh, any, any kind of replacement therapies. So just really getting with your healthcare provider, if that's a concern for you, is a main key. But quitting smoking, like I said, can reduce your chances of developing dementia by over 30%, which is a big deal. And the last one, 
is basically limiting alcohol consumption. Uh, the long-term health risk of excessive alcohol uh, includes uh, learning and memory problems, right? So that's already a problem, which are key factors in uh, some symptoms of dementia. So if you're going to quit drinking alcohol, you want to keep your consumption light to moderate. Uh, moderate drinking really consists of maybe having one drink per day if you're, uh, you know, a woman, and then two drinks per day for men. It's, you know, that's the science behind it, guys. Uh, but other ways to give yourself um, a brain boost and we look in the next slide is, there, is that there are a few more things that you can do to keep your brain healthy. Um, really think about getting a good amount of sleep or what we call high quality sleep on a nightly basis because uh, not getting enough sleep may result in problems uh, with memory and thinking. Uh, sometimes we talk want, want to aim for seven to eight hours per night of sleep, right? That's basically good quality sleep. So if you can do that, you're already helping yourself out in a big time way. Managing or reducing or eliminating stress, right? That's a key factor because chronic stress actually rewires our brain so that there's less activity in some parts of the brain that can handle complex thoughts and tasks. Um, the, the whole goal around that is thinking about if you're always in a stressful environment or around people or experiences that induce stress, what it does for your brain is it causes you to go into that fight or flight you know, syndrome, and when your brain is rewired to only think in terms of those two responses, it takes away activity from area, other areas of your brain. So the whole goal here is to reduce stress. And if you've been listening to a lot of the other uh, lifestyle changes like exercising, things like that, those, those um, other lifestyle changes actually help to reduce your stress. But if you can also avoid people and environments that, that are stress inducing, that's a, that's a big key. Also focus on fall prevention. Now, I know we talked about fall prevention in another presentation, but guys, if you really think about it, brain injury can raise our risk of cognitive decline and dementia by you know, large percentages. So the thing about it is you wanna take steps to prevent falls so you can avoid hitting your head. So anything that can work on your balance, uh, making sure that you have uh, in, you know, a living environment that's free from clutter or, or fall risks, uh, that's a key thing. So, because we wanna, the whole goal there is to prevent head injury, right? And then of course, we wanna talk about managing other health conditions. Risk factors for heart disease and strokes like obesity, uh, high blood pressure and diabetes, those negatively impact your cognitive health, right? So additionally, depression may be linked to an increased risk of uh, cognitive decline. So if you're feeling like you're not yourself or you, you, you've been noticing, um, uh, a, a desire to kind of withdraw from your normal daily routines or you know people that you love and care about that may be a sign that you may want to reach out and talk to someone uh, because like like long-term depression actually can have uh, long-term effects on your cognitive um, your, your your cognitive awareness which can lead to dementias so when we talk to our doctor we really want to talk about some other things too because what it comes down to on this next slide is really looking at some of the, 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 the factors or the symptoms that, that may be like the onset of dementia or Alzheimer's. So if you notice that you're having memory lapses from time to time, they're usually minor and nothing to worry about. But when you have serious memory loss or confusion about normal you know, things, uh, that may be a sign. So some of those symptoms to, to keep in mind is being unable to remember recent events. Right? It may be like slightly hard to jog your memory about specific instances or events as you get older, but it isn't normal to have a drastic decline in your ability to just remember recent happenings, right? Um, forgetting how to use common objects or words. That's another key sign. So it's, a, it's normal to occasionally have a search for a word or to have something on the tip of your tongue, but it shouldn't happen like frequently throughout the day, through, you know, just when you're communicating or trying to talk. Uh, just getting lost in familiar locations. That's another big sign, such that, like, say, for instance, if you're just trying to uh, come home from church or from the grocery store and you literally can't remember where you're at, that's a, that's a sign that, you know, we're, we're having some uh, concerns about our cognitive declines. And that's where we definitely want to get with our healthcare provider. When you find yourself just suddenly forgetting how to navigate, like, familiar surroundings. 
um, being unable to follow directions, right? A person with dementia may actually have a hard time just doing routine tasks, uh, whether it's just like uh, managing their bills or uh, doing like household, um, you know, uh, clean up or just, you know, things around the house. If they just literally forget how to do those things, those may be uh, it's just signs that there's a, a, a challenge there or just following just simple instructions like, you know, doing a recipe, that's a sign. Um, neglecting safety, hygiene, and nutrition are other key signs too. Uh, people with dementia actually exhibit very poor judgment uh, regarding uh, their well-being and sometimes they seemingly just kind of forget or stop really taking care of their their own um, uh, personal uh, hygiene right and so when you start noticing that whether it's yourself or a loved one or a friend or a neighbor you might want to kind of you know bring them into the awareness hey you know you you, you probably change and you you may need to talk to your doctor about dementia or the, or the loss of you know cognitive awareness, right? And then the last one is decline in ability to socialize. Aging shouldn't have a drastic effect on social skills, but it isn't normal to lose interest or all interest in social activities or have a hard time just talking or holding a conversation. Um, that's a that's a sign of you know withdrawal or maybe a shutdown in certain parts of the brain. So we really want to kind of look into those kind of areas if that's a, if that's something that you become aware of. Um, if you or someone you love uh, start noticing any of those signs, you definitely want to talk to your doctor right away, right? Uh, because it, because it could be caused by a specific condition that warrants uh, immediate treatment. And the sooner you notify your doctor, the better, right? So with all that being said. Um, that really um, kind of puts a, a summary on everything. The main objective is just understanding what Alzheimer's and dementia is. So just kind of having a conversation and just understanding like, okay, the whole goal is to have a healthy brain. And what does a healthy brain look like? It's, it's a person who's, you know, um, who can, you know, have good cognitive uh, ability to engage socially engage, stay active in their daily routines. And then of course, there's some lifestyle uh, habits that we can take on on a daily basis where we're talking about the mind diet, uh, talking about staying physically fit, giving ourselves new challenges and thinking about things creative, uh, learning new information, right? Uh, all of these things are really good. And then of course, being aware of those warning signs. So with all those being said, I hope today that you really got a really good grasp of what Alzheimer's is, and then understanding that it's not something that, um, that's an inev inevitability. You do have a way that you can actually take an active role in reducing your risk of actually um, f uh, suffering the, the, the declines of dementia and Alzheimer's. With that, guys, my name is Tori Carmen. Um, I definitely wanted to share with you that, um, f you know, my gratitude and, and of you just joining me for this quick presentation. Also, want to share with you that we do have uh, like these handouts that we do have available that actually go over a lot of the information that we talked about today, such that if you would like um, like the handout or like a care package, uh, just just as our gratitude gift to you. I'm gonna leave my contact information up on this last presentation. Once again, we wanna thank you for, um, for sharing this time with us to learn this information because it is important and then share this information with a friend or a loved one, right? Because the, the goal is to make sure that everyone knows um, what Alzheimer's is and how we can all work together to reduce our risk of, of actually developing it. So with that being said, guys, I thank you and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Also, last thing I will point out is that when we talked about some of the recipes uh, using the MIND diet, I do have a lot of that information available on my Facebook page. Uh, I put that here in the, uh, in the information below. Also, if you want one of these, you can reach out to me via email or through my Facebook, and I'll definitely get you uh, one of these handouts uh, as our gratitude gift. With that, guys, I thank you, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Live healthy, take care of yourself, and we'll see you next time.